In this world, there exist people whose actions defy common sense. They are the kind of people you never want to associate with under normal circumstances. However, humans are prone to making mistakes. If there's filth on the ground, one would normally avoid it. But sometimes you can't avoid it because you don't realize it's filth. The most troublesome are those that don't seem to like filth at first glance. My name is Ruby, and I'm a 29-year-old pharmacist. Despite the delicate name Ruby given by my parents, I'm quite tall. Ever since I was a child, I've been tall, standing at 5'7". I'm a head taller than my female colleagues at work. My features are strongly defined, lacking in cuteness. Yet, even someone like me found a good match. I married a man who works in the same building as the pharmacy I work at. His name is Josh, a 30-year-old businessman. He's a gentleman with a bright and calm personality. We became a couple after Josh came to the pharmacy seeking help. Josh's direct boss had come in with a lower back strain. The pharmacy where I work is mostly staffed by women. Being relatively older and taller, I'm oddly adored by my colleagues. Among them, Crystal, a 26-year-old junior, is particularly noticeable. Raised in an all-girls school, Crystal admires tall women like me. Ruby, let's go for drinks together today, I apologized to Crystal, who invited me with sparkling eyes. Sorry, I have to visit my parents' home with my husband today. It's about my brother. Upon hearing my reason, Crystal smiled in understanding. Oh, your brother's engaged? Right, congratulations. I sighed involuntarily at my junior's pure-hearted congratulations. Perceptive Crystal noticed I was troubled. Seeing her worried expression, I forced a smile to deceive her. Don't look like that, it's nothing serious just some issues with my brother's fiancé. Crystal has been under my guidance since she started working at the pharmacy, so she's overly attached to me. Even when I married Josh, she was crying while congratulating us, so it was no secret to such a junior that I was troubled. On our way back to the pharmacy, Crystal asked me in a low voice, Is it that your parents don't like your brother's fiancé? Realizing she had hit the mark, I gave in. Dad insists that my brother's fiancé is odd. My family home now only has dad, as mom has already passed away. Dad was all smiles and totally supportive of my marriage. However, he's been hesitant about my brother Frederick's marriage. My brother Frederick is 26, the same age as Crystal. Since mom passed away, dad has been a single father, and I've tried to fill in for mom as much as I could. That's why Frederick and I have always had a good sibling relationship. Frederick has always been smart, topping his class in school. He graduated from a prestigious university and now works at a major company. He's a serious and sincere young man, but being so focused on his studies and a bit stiff, he didn't have much experience dating women. Then, Frederick fell in love. The object of his affection was a woman working at the reception desk of the same major company. Her name is Agnes, a 24-year-old beauty. She fell for Frederick, too, and they started dating. Frederick, who relies on me as his sister, introduced me to her first. Agnes was charming, lovely, and cheerful. She was so delicate and pure that I understood why Frederick was so smitten. When she learned I was a pharmacist, she said, That's amazing. I admire you being so smart. She came off as innocent, carefree, and a lovely lady. I thought Dad would be over the moon to have such a sweet daughter-in-law. I had no doubts about that. But then, Dad called me as soon as Frederick brought Agnes home. I expected Dad to be thrilled about his son bringing home a lovely fiancé. However, on the phone, Dad lowered his voice. You know, Agnes seems suspicious. I have a bad feeling about her. Even Dad, usually straightforward, couldn't tell the happy-looking Frederick and confided in me. Dad had no concrete reason but felt she was shady and creepy. To ease Dad's worries, I decided to visit home with Josh. I can't believe it. Dad was all for it when I married Josh. Hearing me chuckle about Dad's overprotectiveness, Crystal frowned. I don't like that woman either. How dare she call you her sister? Crystal seemed angry, jealous that she couldn't call me sister. As I tried to calm down Crystal, pouting her lips, she said seriously, This is my theory. Having survived an all-girls school, innocent, pure, lovely beauties are usually the worst. Be careful. Thanks, I'll keep that in mind even though I don't want to. Little did I know then how accurate Crystal's theory would be. After work, I headed to my parents' house with my husband Josh. I felt bad for making busy Josh take time out. 
As I apologized for Dad's worries, Josh said kindly, Don't worry, Cody is just concerned. There must be something. There must be something. Josh was calmly choosing a gift to bring to Dad at home. Josh's mother had also passed away early, leaving him with a single father. My father-in-law, a very busy man we rarely saw, but he was a respectable person, just like Josh's dad would be. He calls me Ruby Lou and is very fond of me. Morris, wanting a daughter, often sends gifts. The last gift was a set of expensive brand watches for couples. I rarely use it because it's too fancy for everyday wear. It's nice of Cody to think of us, but I feel guilty. As we were on the train to my parents' house, I sighed, and Josh smiled. Don't hesitate. Dad loves you, Ruby. Josh wore the watch Morris had given him. It suited Josh, but as a pharmacist, it would be too conspicuous for me to wear. However, I truly appreciated Morris's kindness and thought of wearing it from now on. Before I knew it, we had arrived at my family home. Now only Dad lives there, as both Frederick and I have moved out. I worried that energetic Dad might be lonely. Dad is an engraver and still carves whenever he gets orders. Dad, though a bit stubborn, is well-liked in the neighborhood for his good nature. Such a smart dad is troubled over his son's marriage. Though not based on Crystal or Josh's words, dad came out silently. When we visited, dad came out silently. We're home, dad. I brought Josh with me, I said. Good evening. We hope we're not intruding, dad nodded. Hmm, and ushered us into the living room. Dad, being fond of cleanliness, keeps the house immaculate. He insisted on us sitting down, stopping me from making tea. Ruby, Josh... I'm sorry to have you come over so late. I quickly tried to calm him. Dad, stop it. Let's just relax a bit. As I soothed Dad, Josh presented our gift. It was a famous one wine. So there we were, me, Josh, and Dad, discussing over drinks while I served the sliced cheese. Dad was sipping his wine. Then taking a slight breath, he began to speak. I'm a craftsman dealing with names. Carving so many names has made me sensitive. According to Dad's years of experience, a person is not defined by their name. Instead, life is about shaping the given name into one's own. So, Dad senses things when carving names requested by people. He claims to understand if the owner of the name is sincere and hardworking. By carving it, contrary to the belief that a craftsman's work is lonely, it's quite the opposite. They interact with various people like clients, fellow craftsmen, and suppliers. Seemingly indifferent, Craftsmen are often the first to observe people closely. Dad mentioned when I first brought Josh home as an example. When I saw Josh, I knew right away that he was right for you. Josh can be trusted. I just knew it. Josh smiled, replying, I'm honored. But when the topic shifted to Frederick's fiance, Agnes, Dad's expression hardened. He said he felt an indescribable creepiness the moment he saw Agnes. Nothing was explicitly wrong with her behavior. She was polite and beautiful, but something didn't sit right with him. I argue not having had that impression at all. You're overthinking it. Maybe you were just surprised Frederick brought home such a beautiful fiancé. As I chuckled, Dad exclaimed, Frederick is being deceived. That woman reeks of rot. Overwhelmed by Dad's intense reaction, Josh calmly said, Even so, Frederick's marriage is their business. It's best to not say anything rash. Nodding in agreement with Josh, Dad sighed. It was all based on Dad's intuition. I thought it rude to hold such a strange, bad impression of Agnes, but Dad wasn't one to badmouth someone just because of his likes and dislikes. I understood his genuine concern for his son's marriage. As I pondered what to do, Josh cheerfully assured, Don't worry, Cody. If anything happens, I'll handle it. Dad relaxed a bit, reassured by the thought of Josh's help. I thought Josh was just saying it to comfort Dad. I had dismissed it as Dad's unnecessary worry, but Josh was actually making real preparations. Thanks to Josh's persuasion, Frederick and Agnes got married. I was moved by Frederick's groom look. Agnes was also elegant in her beautiful, pure dress. With this, Agnes became my sister-in-law. Frederick remained busy at the major company. He talked innocently about looking forward to their honeymoon. Despite Dad's reluctance, Josh must have convinced him. Frederick was in high spirits thanking Josh. But I was troubled. There was something odd about my sister-in-law, Agnes. 
she'd visit me at work whenever she was free. Though the building where the pharmacy is located has restaurants and shops, it's primarily a prescription pharmacy, so patients come in. Her presence without a reason was a disturbance. Initially, she claimed to drop by while shopping. I have plans to have tea with friends. I just want to see you, Ruby. Agnes's over-familiarity irked Crystal, who glared sharply at her. Crystal was muttering that I should keep Agnes away from the pharmacy because of my busy schedule. What's with her showing up at her sister-in-law's workplace during work hours? I'm sorry. I'll speak to her about it. Despite my warnings, Agnes's behavior didn't change. Many of our patients are sensitive and dislike noise, but Agnes talked loudly in the pharmacy, upsetting the patient's peace. A patient reached their limit and complained to the hospital, which led to a complaint being filed against the pharmacy. I was profusely apologetic to the pharmacy manager. Seeing me like that, Crystal's anger grew. I can't take it anymore. If you find it hard to say, then I will, she exclaimed. This was during our break as we returned from lunch at a nearby cafe. During our break, I had repeatedly scolded Agnes, but to no effect. Frederick was also troubled that Agnes had quit her job and wasn't doing any housework. Regrettably, Dad's bad premonition had come true. Dad became wary of Agnes and took away the keys to the family home from Frederick. This led to a major argument between Frederick and Dad, but it was a wise decision. Frederick gradually realized why Dad had sounded the alarm as he learned of Agnes's unreasonable behavior. For some reason, Agnes kept following me. It didn't seem like genuine affection from a sister-in-law, but rather something more sinister. The thought of Agnes showing up. One day, Agnes followed me again at the pharmacy, keeping me uneasy. Then, one day, Agnes followed me again. Seeing me frightened, Crystal stepped forward. Don't follow us. It's a nuisance for the pharmacy. As Crystal glared, Agnes smirked triumphantly. Be grateful I even visit a place where an ugly big sister like you works. I realized she was referring to me. Before I knew it, Crystal and Agnes were physically fighting. Crystal was furious, yelling, You lowlife woman! I hurriedly separated them, but my wallet fell and its contents scattered. Taking advantage of the confusion, Agnes fled. I'm sorry. I just couldn't control my anger, Crystal apologized. Crystal and I gathered the scattered contents, including my point cards. Finding no cards missing, I felt relieved. However, this was just the beginning of the turmoil. After Agnes finally returned to a peaceful work environment, stopped showing up at the pharmacy, things calmed down a bit. Frederick, somewhat relieved, left for a honeymoon with Agnes. I finally returned to a peaceful work environment. Crystal continued to be a good friend and colleague, but during a lunch break while eating sandwiches outside, she said, Ruby, about your wallet. Are you sure nothing was stolen? I have a bad feeling. I checked afterwards. Nothing was missing. To my response, Crystal looked uneasy. Well, if you say so. Crystal, though a bit eccentric, is perceptive and smart. Unbeknownst to me, a vital credit card had been stolen. The culprit was my sister-in-law, Agnes. Agnes's reason for following me was to steal valuables. She had seen the matching watches my husband and I received from Morris, mistaking me for being wealthy because of the expensive brand. Agnes stole my credit card. Agnes went on a shopping spree with it during her trip. Even Frederick, who initially overlooked it, was dismayed by Agnes's extravagant spending. Frederick confronted Agnes about her excessive shopping, clearly exceeding the credit limit. Isn't it strange to be able to shop this much? Agnes ignored Frederick's suspicions. She had extravagantly spent a total of $220,000 on my credit card. Frederick paled when he realized it was a card in my name. But Frederick knows my personality well. He sensed something was off. Agnes, getting carried away, called me during a break at work. Crystal was listening next to me. Agnes said in a ridiculous tone, Thanks for the $20,000 wedding gift. She claimed to be thankful for being allowed to use my credit card. I was confused for a moment. So, I don't have a... Agnes made a strange noise. At my cool response, Agnes made a strange noise. Huh? She candidly confessed to stealing the card from my wallet, knowing it was in my name. That's when I finally realized the truth. Agnes had unwittingly used a passport to hell. In short, the card was in my name only managed by Morris. I usually didn't carry it around. 
Originally, I preferred electronic money payments over credit cards, but Morris insisted on getting me one when I married Josh. Use it when you need to, Ruby. The bill goes to my account, he said, laughing heartily. I could never dream of pleading Morris's account, so I never used it. I had almost forgotten its existence. This was a strategy by Josh. Taking Dad's intuition about Agnes seriously, he set a trap. The unused credit card was bait, renewed but never used. He hinted at its existence to Agnes, leading her to steal it. It was natural for me not to panic about a missing credit card. About a mi Josh had sneaked in and placed it in my wallet without my knowledge. I had shown Agnes my wallet before. She noticed the credit card then and waited for an opportunity to steal it. When Crystal and Agnes got into a scuffle, I intervened to stop them. That was when the wallet was dropped and she took it. Agnes fell perfectly into Josh's trap. When I explained this to her, Agnes responded with a defiant tone. I did nothing wrong. Your father-in-law can just pay the 20 grand. I calmly informed her, unaware of the seriousness of the situation. Morris knows about your misuse. You won't get off easily. Be prepared. Actually, the impressive building where the pharmacy is located is Morris's own company building. Josh assists in Morris's work. Both Morris and Josh are serious businessmen and gentlemen, but also strategists. Moreover, Morris has a wide range of connections. He even has his interactions with people who operate on the fringes of the law. Misusing a credit card managed by such a cunning mogul would not end well. Morris was fully intent on detaining Agnes upon her return. When he told her his men were watching the airport, Agnes's voice trembled. What's going to happen to me? I don't know. I don't care, really, as I coldly replied. Agnes got angry on her own. She shouted that her husband Frederick would pay. But that was impossible. Frederick had resisted Dad but yielded to Josh's persuasion and presence. Not going through with the registration of their marriage, meaning even after the wedding ceremony, they were still strangers. Knowing the truth, Frederick had left Agnes behind and returned home. Agnes cried when she realized Frederick had abandoned her. As her crying grew loud, I was about to hang up, but Crystal snatched the phone. Crystal harshly dismissed the sobbing Agnes. It's your responsibility, right? You deserve it, ugly. After Crystal handed the phone back, I ended the call. You have a personal grudge against women like Agnes. She just smiled at my question. And so, my brother Frederick's marriage fiasco ended. Frederick sued Agnes for the unauthorized use of the stolen card. Agnes couldn't pay back the $20,000, so she ended up borrowing from a financial institution introduced by my father-in-law, Morris, with high interest rates. Agnes's debt quickly ballooned to a huge amount. She worked tirelessly morning to night to repay it. However, she was caught trying to default and flee. It seems she's working abroad now. What kind of job? I don't know. Frederick had quarreled with Dad over the marriage, but they reconciled. Josh mediated, and our family was back to normal. Frederick regretted not being more discerning with women. I'm ashamed for troubling everyone. Josh comforted the disheartened Frederick. Frederick, even with a pretty and pure woman, you should look a bit more at the inner self. Frederick nodded earnestly to Josh's gentle admonition. I apologize to Morris for the trouble caused, but Morris just smiled broadly, waving it off. For Ruby Lou, it's no big deal. Josh did well, huh? Morris then invited us all on vacation during our next break. Josh and I agreed, but Morris chuckled mischievously. Why not invite Ruby's dad and Frederick too? And Crystal, he laughed, suggesting to us. Crystal and Frederick would be a good match. When I invited Crystal, she was thrilled to accept. Traveling with you is like a dream. She didn't mind that it wasn't just me, but also Josh my father-in-law, dad, and my brother. Eventually, we all went on vacation. Josh and I explored tourist spots together, while Morris and dad relaxed by the sea. Meanwhile, Crystal and Frederick were arguing. The strong-willed Crystal blamed Frederick for falling for someone like Agnes. Frederick was initially patient, but eventually, he couldn't take it anymore. I admit I caused a huge problem for my family, but you don't have the right to scold me like this. I do. I'm Ruby's little sister. When Morris and Dad returned from the sea, Frederick was crying, and Crystal was eating ice cream. Seeing Frederick's heartache from Crystal's lecture, 
Morris whispered to Dad. I thought Frederick and Crystal would be a good match. Dad laughed gracefully at Morris's wry smile. Frederick and Crystal, who initially fought upon meeting, got married a year later. Crystal finally became my sister-in-law. Dad was fully supportive of Frederick and Crystal's marriage. Indeed, Dad had the ability to see through people's true nature. Josh Morris and I are smiling, convinced of this. Island.